diverse team that is a part of Educators in VR. Educators in VR is dedicated to integrating immersive technology into education, into business, into your life and training, everything else. And we were founded in 2018 and we've done a series of conferences and this is a new, every time, every year we do a, a different version because we're testing the experience, we're testing the immersive nature of all of this and it evolves as we go. And today's event with Robert Vogel is going to be, is right, right on course with that evolution <laughs> for training, especially when it comes to soft skills and the research is going into it to help us learn over time how this works. So Educators in VR is a membership organization. My name is Laurel. I am the co-founder and director along with my business partner, Daniel Dabosky Bryant. We have some of our team here I just wanna point out um, that uh, this event is also being filmed. So Tony Cubed is the filmer and he, you will see him wandering around um, and moving, just ignore him. He's our camera in the shape of an avatar. We have Gabriella is here. She is our um, uh, team manager for all of our different teams. We have over 25 teams with educators in VR that are the special interest groups that um, each one follows one of the XR industry verticals. We have aviation, we have language learning, we have uh, virtual schooling, which is for like homeschooling. We're, uh, we have, um, we have a science team that is in development. We have our research team, which this event is all about, medical and healthcare, and many other ones. And so you can find more information about that at educatorsinvr.com. This is day three of our three-day conference, which is a mini conference that is really dedicated to VR research. And I'm looking at this as a great appetizer. We've had events over the last two days that are exploring a a school that went into lockdown like everyone else did during the, at the beginning of the pandemic. And instead of going just online, they leveraged VR to revolutionize language. It's a language college down in Australia to really leverage that possibility of what's going on there. And we've had um, oh, just tons of things, but coming up today, we have events in Altspace VR, which is for, are free and open to the public, no password, codes involved with it that are covering um, uh, the next one up is um, a VR headset called Himosi, which is developed by um, a, a, a research scientist business person who's in Switzerland that is more like a whole helmet and it's studying facial expressions and how those can be used in research. There's cameras inside for ex um, facial expression and, and emotion tracking um, for research really cool to actually talk to the designer developer for this headset. Also, Dr. Jose Ferrer is coming up He's from Barcelona, is going to be talking about the research that he used to convince his hospital to create a VR mindfulness and wellness treatment area and department for their healthcare workers, especially during the pandemic at a time where companies like hospitals are not making those kind of decisions or allocating those resources. He was able to convince them and has done an amazing job with that. And we have all kinds of other things going on, including job assessment training and um, uh, evaluation and VR research that um, on how do you evaluate a potential employee based on orderliness in VR, picking the hardest thing to evaluate when it comes to jobs and to do in VR. And then we have a social to end the event later also in Outspace. But I'm gonna turn it over to Robert Vogel, who is absolutely a master whiz, master whiz when it comes to everything engage, everything engage and also in and tr um, also business in training. Trend. And so I'm very, very excited. Very, very excited. Uh, Robert, you wanna tell, uh -huh. you're gonna tell us more about who you are, so I don't wanna take any more of your time. Yes. It's all you. Yes. Thank you very much uh, for this warm welcome. Warm welcome from my side as well. I'm Robert, and since around about a year or so, I'm also really fascinated really from fascinated. virtual reality, reality. Especially, especially after the standalone headsets, which means that were really a game changer, not having these big calculators, these big computers, not as heavy graphic cards and the, the bindings of the of the headsets to this uh, graphic card, but changing this with the standalone headsets is from my point of view, really the game changer. And the second, I think are these platforms. So especially as we right now, right today in Engage, using these plat platforms in a really fast way to build things 
is from my point of view a second game changer there. And um, I run a little company and we help customers and uh, small and medium companies and sometimes also big companies on their path to the metaverse. And today I would like to show you, first of all, uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers study. So a few ideas from that, but a uh, research is only one thing. And for me, that's always the basic for let's prove it now in reality. And I will show you two examples of how we were able to prove this in reality with two tools of workshops for a team building workshop and the second one for business process management. Uh, also, as I, I, I believe, but it's finally your uh, impressions, how you think about this. And I think in the last feedback or final feedback, I, I would love to hear your um, impressions and how do you think all these things were going on. So just follow me and we start. So I brought with me two studies. One is the PVC study for uh, virtual reality soft skills trainings. And there are four, I think, areas that show big value adds for trainings and for companies. And the first is that the time to complete a training is much, much lower. So here you see numbers in the classroom. We have two hours in an e-learning scenario, 45 minutes and the VR 29 minutes, which mean if you have two hours, you can do much different things than in the classroom. Or you said the same content I want to show in the training in the classroom is much better with a lower time frame shown in the, in the virtual reality area. And this I think is really a big value, not only from a savings perspective, but also from a distraction perspective from a training perspective for them being in these training and have a big training and training. If you want to take a look and you can also here show the, in the gallery, I put the images here in the study gallery uh, with the images I show you here on the screen, you also can take a look around. And if you have a question and there would please Lance, Lance to give us the opportunity to put post-its on this, then you can put a post-it on the, on the slide or on the picture if you have a question and then I can uh, answer you this question. Post-its you, um, you can create by your wrist menu. That means if you do the same movement, like same movement, take a look at your watch, at there is one symbol that looks like a post-it. And if you click on this, you will open a post-it area and there you can fill in your your questions. So the first thing, in VR, you in need VR, less you need time than in a typical classroom situation. And it's really an enormous amount of, of time you save and you uh, get back there. So the second, pictures of the PricewaterhouseCoopers study. So I place you here to come with me in this, in the back area. The second thing that is also, I think, really interesting and amazing is that in anything you learned in the virtual reality area, you are much more, let me say, familiar or better or much more confident in discussing these things you learn and as well in acting on issues, which means if you learn something, it's much more in your inner emotions and you can act much, much better and more efficient on these things you learn. And this is also an outcome of, of the study. And I, I can remember only myself, and I will show you this also, of course, in a minute. Um, one of my first trainings here were on, on energy. And we built a, 
energy power plant on the sea so that the tide is going up and down and these tide waves really produce energy. And I can remember it like it was yesterday, that how we built this and what was the impression behind and the calculation behind. And that is really follows here the this idea and the outcome also of the PricewaterhouseCoopers study of um, having a much more better binding and much more better acting and confidence of the things you learned. A third one is, of course, <laughs> And this is here on the on this side, of course, the emotional, uh, the emotional connection with the topics in the virtual reality, and um, I I pretty often um, see this at any ending of conferences or sessions or events you have. This is the the wow factor. I name this in this way. So really, you are completely with your whole body connected to the virtual reality trainings, events, sessions, and finally you say, wow, it's so, I'm, I'm so within it. I'm, I'm with my whole body in this area. It's so immersive. And I really see also, um, and the outcome of the, uh, the study here is also that the emotional connection is much, much higher than in typical classrooms or e-learning scenarios. I think one reason, this is the final um, piece of paper or the final picture I have with you, is that you are sometimes with a headset, you have no chance to do other things. I made a post, I think two or three days ago on LinkedIn where I said, well, okay, do you remember these good old webinars? There's someone starting a webinar, putting the PowerPoint on the screen and anybody said, oh my goodness, now I can start doing my emails. So. In this scenario, you have no chance. So you have a better emo emotional um, connection and you are less distracted from uh, other things that happen. And this combination, I think, is really a big value add of the trainings and of the events and of the workshops that are here in the virtual reality. Do you have any questions so far? Or Robert, so what I'll, has been yeah. what has been done to um, like what are the pieces? Obviously, you're less distracted, but is mm -hmm. it the graphics that are in VR or the group conversations you're able to have in a focused way versus Zoom? You're put into a group. Like, are there certain pieces of it that have stood out as the more mm -hmm. effective aspects of the learning? Yeah, I think two that came up in my mind at once. The first thing is the interaction. So we will do a, a workshop here in a minute. And, and I think doing things together is really one of those things that, 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 that come into these better emotional feeling if you are in a VR training. And the second, as you mentioned, is the, um, you are with your whole body here in this area. And, and I have, um, not today, but perhaps you can join another Educators in VR session. I show this pretty often. I have a bridge over water and the bridge is, is out of wood and it's around about 10 or 15 meter high. And if you move or walk over this bridge, you feel the height in your stomach. And that is pretty amazing. People say, oh my goodness, it's so high, but you're sitting at home or standing at home, but you feel this. And I think this is this, the second thing that, that really, you, 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 it's not only your brain, it's, it's your whole body who's feeling things here and feeling connected with the environment and with all the people here in this, in this virtual reality. That, that is, I think these are the two, the two points. Um, you, you do it with your whole body and you are in, in here and, and things are real and really crazy. <laughs> And perhaps the, the other topics, um, only a few per, of, out of my mind. I think you can do things here that um, you cannot do in, in other scenarios, in real scenarios. Like I have a, a product, you can blow this air, you can increase uh, the product and then move forward, move directly into this. We have sessions on the Mars, on the moon. You can, and uh, I was <laughs> in the Educatism VR session, you can move under the sea and see the pollution there, which is 
amazing. And this is what you not can do in, in the reality. And even if you start pretty simple, you can draw in three dimensions in here. This is pretty often my first uh, impression or the first wow effect I show people really thinking about in three dimensions. If you draw a, a cube on a piece of paper, it's drawing in a dimension. If you do it here, it's a real 3D. I think that could be another point that is pretty different than in the in the reality. Any further question, further ideas? I, I just had a question of as the estimate. Did was there an actual on the estimate of time it took to get back on task? Was that an estimate versus an actual or um is that not quantifiable by the the study? In the study that were all actual. So they did the the training content in three different ways, in the classroom, in an yeah, Zoom or Teams session, and finally in VR. And then they compare directly. So these were real, real actuals, actual values from the timing perspective. Nick, you also had an, a question. Um, thank, it was just a ponder, really, whether um, the sense of agency that you have or you can have in VR, um, whether that makes a difference to it being memorable. Um, I did mm -hmm. a class uh, last week where people were looking at sharks and interestingly, all the participants or many of them had their own little shark here and some people were sort of stroking it. There's, there's sort of an ownership and an agency that makes it more them more involved, more relevant to them, which I would imagine would make it last longer in your memory and more meaningful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Then I would like to show you um, the second study. This is, and sorry for that, in, in German, there is no existing English one, but I talk you through the uh, first topics. So, so the first slide here is what are the potentials or where is a market for virtual reality and it's pretty amazing of course and i think it's the proof of the things we are discussing and anytime you're in virtual reality i think the first thing is training i i think that's clear you can do things that you cannot do in reality you can go to a power plant you can do, go to anywhere and and it's it's quite different and i also believe that training is the the majority here the second thing is conferencing and collaboration. Of course, conferencing and co collaboration is, and as we mentioned before, or Laurel mentioned before, is if you do it in a virtual reality, a part of, and I always name it best of three, I know Laurel do not like the, the Zoom stuff, and it would be best of three, so meeting in a physical world, because sometimes we need to hug each other, so we are social persons, and then, being and have nearly the same feelings if you are in a virtual reality. And best of both and a good mixture, I think, is the, the value way to the future. The third one, experience and product presentations, of course. We in Germany in Munich have a big fair where they show buildings and big machines. And I did a snapshot here. You can bring the big machines here in a second. Move through these big machines drive in this big machines, that's not a problem. So having a product um, presentation, I think is also a, a huge um, offer or a huge opportunity in the, in the virtual reality. And then of course, I think this is the past, was also the past and was also the beginning, is design and simulating. I think all big 500s have virtual reality, not like we in a standalone headset and in these platforms, but for their design and their production, for sure. And the third one, uh, the one, two, three, four, fifth one um, is services. And of course, a situation for augmented reality in this area. If you have your, your glasses on, your headset on, and you can see the reality and then see what is what do you have to do on a product, on whatever you have to repair. Okay, any question in this area? <laughs> Okay, then the final slide or the final picture. So, so please follow me and I show you the first three and then we go to the interactive part. 
So these are, this graphic shows the biggest hurdles in virtual reality out of the study. And the first one is really, people do not know what is possible here in VR. I'm in a conference, I have the headsets and the people walking by and said, oh yeah, that's gaming. And anybody knows this from gaming and they do not really know what, what happened there and what is what shifted since the standalone headsets, what is possible in training, in meeting, in events. So I think this is one of the, or the study set, this is one of the biggest hurdles here. And the second is, or are the headsets. So that means that at the moment you need one of these headsets and I'm so, um, I, I love it so much that um, all the big companies that dealing with hardware are now moving this way to having a, a real cool form factor and develop and, and really cool headsets that you can, that looks like a, a sun closet <laughs> um, or a skiing, a skiing glass. It's really cool. And the third one, this is what we're doing here right now, is we need content and use cases. So that is pushing forward. That is also at the moment um, a hurdle and we need to push this forward by building content, building classes, building all the things we can do in here and show the people and show the value at, of, these, of these content. And this is the word. And I just load a snapshot. Give me a second. Do we have any question right now? Any question? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do. <clears throat> I notice I notice all of the wording on the um on the board is not in English. So is yeah. it a way that that we can, you know, whichever um language of our choice is, is it a way that the wording would be automatically translated into like say for instance I speak English, <laughs> it would be automatically translated into English. Yeah, hopefully that that is a function that hopefully will come because <laughs> I miss this I miss this too, so that I talk in German and it's typed at once um, translated and as well the uh, the graphics here. So I, hopefully this will come. I do not have it right now or yet, um, but I believe and I think that this is uh, a couple of of um, years or one or two years and then we will have this. Because this is so important. We are all from different region, regions in the world. And it's so important that it's like the time frame. So I like all the functionality, but you put in your time and your time frame and anyone else it, is seeing it in, in their own time frame. That is the functionality we yes. need for written things as well. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Len, let's move on. Just follow me. <laughs> So one of the um, social skills, of course, is team building and collaboration. And um, I have a task for you, and I think we will use five to 10 minutes to do this. And it's a pretty simple task. Here you see all the stuff to be able to build a really cool Greek ruin. And the task is think you are a part of the history, history team of the Great World Theme Park. And in two months should be the opening of the awesome attraction walk through a Greek ruin. And this is what we will do. So these parts here are shareable, which mean with your right controller and a click on the um, magenta circle, or pink circle, then you can move this part. So click on the circle and then you can move this part. And you have all the area here to build these awesome great Greek ruin. And finally, if we will start now, we have around about five minutes and finally we will have a conversation 
and the direction or the link to your normal work with these reflection questions. So you can answer that. We will discuss in the group then finally, what were the success factors of the collaboration? So we will observe ourselves. How did we make or how did you make decision? What looks the leadership like in this team building? What change did you experience in the individual faces? So we will hopefully see that something happened. How did you manage the improve? Where do you see parallels from building a green green to your normal daily work? Questions so far? Are we going to be working as one team or put into teams? We're working as one team. I think we have one, two, three, four, five people, six. Four, four, five people. So let's okay. let's, so um, let's let's do it as one team. And if we are on PC and in PC, it's a little bit harder to grab things. You can do it, but it's a little bit harder. Um, you can do this with your mouse. So with the mouse go to the um, pink circle, and then you can move or shift. But as we are a team. These of us that are in headsets can move things and perhaps you on a PC or on a desktop can give us some advice where we should to move things. Any further question? Not for me. So where will then we let's go. Yeah. Robert, how, Robert, how, how long have we got? <coughs> five minutes. How long You'll be have five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Thank yeah. You. So let's start. <laughs> are these are they all part? Are they all part, or are, they, are these sort of finished items, or are they all? all you can all you can use all way? things all things that here shared. Yeah. Steph, did you want to direct anybody or anything? <laughs> I'm still just trying to see around my pad here. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, I'm going to start begin? moving We're beginning. some of the, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, Laurel, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just moving everything onto the, onto here to begin with so that yeah. Yeah. they can oh, then oh, be jiggled. Oh, I just found my gizmo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, pardon. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <Whoops. Oops. laughs> whoa, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Oops. Oh, it's here. Yeah. That was heavy. <laughs> well, it did. It is. Just going to put things down for now. We can see what we've got. What's this? I think we're all working individually, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> very well as a team. Which, which is a big observation in the team building training. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> we are. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you think we're all similar so. sort of? I've okay, actually grabbed I something. I'm not doing much with it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cool. Hey, cool. <laughs> That's great. Okay, hang okay, on. Hang on. Get, this one. get this one. Come here, honey. So, <laughs> might make a little, shall I make a little gift shop? <laughs> yeah, for example, or something like a cave or so. So, let's have two more minutes. 
Oh, let's have three more minutes. It's, it's looking good. <laughs> Can you knock any of these over? Because if, if it's a ruin, that's a thought. Should... Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's oh, no. a good idea. You know, can if they you, be knocked if you over? Build, are you building a ruin? So you can you can do something like that. Something this like that. that it's more that it's in the directly in the ground. <laughs> Part of the question. I destroyed something. I'm sorry. So. Two more minutes. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And let's do the tree here also. It's nice. <laughs> wow. Close. Okay. <laughs> then come over to me. Great, great things. The first thing I really love in this exercise, you never get two same ruins here. It's so amazing. So much creativity in, <laughs> in here and <laughs> And really cool. Thank you very, very much Thank for very doing very this uh, small exercise. And now we can move and, and um, this is an, an exercise in the session, but if you think about this is a real team, a collaboration event or training, then you can ask now your question. What are the success factors in collaboration? What do you think? <laughs> I think we all took action. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Yeah. So finally, what, what, finally, what there was what, no pattern of a defined collaboration, not in, not in, in say it words. In, the pattern here was that something started to um, started. develop there and Nick does a, a small gift shop and here was the uh, the big entrance to the ruin. And so there is something that, that, that we developed together without saying something to each other, without <laughs> one lady or guy that said, you have to do this there, this there, this there. That is awesome. So we work together building something, but we do not have a kind of a commander. That is That is really cool and pretty often the beginning. And then the team starts to think about, should we, what is, what is our target? And should we do things a little bit different? So that could be then a second iteration, but that is really cool. You work together without having someone in command. That's really cool. Thank you. <laughs> and now you, you can go to two. How, how did you make decisions? So especially why something there? <laughs> well, I think the, one of the challenges is time, right? So when, yeah, when you're yeah, working absolutely. on a timeline, then um, it's hard, I think, to really get together because they all kind of fall together to collaborate, you know, make a decision and then talk about, okay, what are we going to do, especially in a big group, which is why I think we yeah. said, okay, well, let's all just kind of, we're kind of collaborating and working together, but still doing our own things. Um, mm -hmm. In my mind, 
I'm a structure guy. So I was like, well, <laughs> I, I, so I said, okay, well, why don't I, I, I attempted to rebuild the temple of Apollo in Adelphi in my mind. Cool. So, yeah. Right. So that was kind of, so it gave me structure to build something with some organization. And then I was curious mm -hmm. to see, you know, then we come back together was the thought to say, okay, yeah, what, what did we all do? And how did we all think uh, of, of what were other people's um, uh, decision making and strategy plans? Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to see what other people thought. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Cool. Yeah. yeah, thank you. My observation is, and something that maybe no one's thought of yet is that in any typical kindergarten class, there's only just so many <laughs> blocks to play with. And when you yeah. uh, wind up with sign of fights between different kids because they want to use all the blocks, uh, that's yeah. not a problem here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. Thank you. And if you, if you remember our pictures and graphics in the beginning so how is your emotional that how's your emotional or your feeling right now after these only five minutes of course <laughs> what i when i noticed this the the lapse of time it seems like time <laughs> went by so fast and it was just very entertaining but <laughs> but still trying to uh, accomplish a task at the same time so i i did notice yeah. that part Absolutely. Ditto. Yeah. Okay. I don't think then, anyone minded if someone else did something to augment what they'd already done. So there yeah. was also this kind of collaboration that was unspoken, which is kind of neat yeah. too. Absolutely. Okay, great. So then follow me and I show you the second one. So I load it for you. Give me a second. So So the second example oh. I mentioned is a business process management class. Wow. <laughs> what you see here is more or less a typical standard. So a seed row, there you have the business process model notification. And finally, you go here to a swim lane piece of paper and draw the process. And this that's, is that's awesome. pre pretty often, pretty often the typical standard class. Of course, you can do the same thing here in the virtual reality as well, build such a classroom, but you can do so much more and what you can do more. This is what I would like to show you. And I just load this one in addition. So just follow me, I load it in the background. What if you think about a process in the virtual reality with just do it? And the process here. Awesome. So. <laughs> so here, just I'm on the I'm on the green area here in front of these nice little restaurants <laughs> in Pisa, and and as you come out of these, let me say, standard training class, this is what you can do in virtual reality. So it's the same content, the same class, but a little bit different. And you can think about these process and learning these processes here in a simulated environment. And the process we did here for um, a customer, or we have the first iterations, is thinking about, I, I have a small little restaurant and I want to increase the service. So I want to get feedback. I want to think what happens if new people come into the restaurant, 
what about the kitchen? How do they deliver the food and stuff like this? And so we simulated this and we did it uh, twice that people are here able to join the restaurant. And then the service is waiting saying, hello, a warm welcome. How are you today? And whatever is, is the task of, of the service that are inviting awesome. you, that is your guest, that is your host. And then you can go further, bring the people to the table, sit down. You really can sit. That means to, with your teleporter, you point on a chair and then really sit on this table. And then finally, you have something with, with the cook and you have an order, place an order. And here is the interface to the kitchen. And then you can start by saying, well, okay, I want to have these nice little sandwich. And then the cook have to bring the sandwich here to the desk and you have to grab, <laughs> are able to grab the sandwich oh and bring it to the table. And it's the same process, the same content, like in this class you saw a few minutes before. It's a little bit different here. And if you are, if you already defined the process, you can invite real customers and you can train and simulate this with real customers and then get directly feedback out of the process you defined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bravo, Dwayne. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, just a little fun. <laughs> this is this is if you if you have observers and then the observers wrote down what what did they saw and um, what is the feedback from them. Derek, were you a waiter in a past life? <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. That's beautiful. So, yeah. <laughs> What is what is the really cool thing, and and that is that is also in trading. <laughs> you see the energy at once. If you have the classroom there, people are sitting there and saying, "Oh my goodness, I have to take a look at this business process notification." If you come in here, you start at once grabbing stuff, bring it to the table, do things. The energy in this room is so much higher than in this class five minutes away from here and this is the different and this proves all the aspects we saw in the beginning of this price waterhouse cooper study and this is really i pretty often i say well we have the study and it's a check mark with the, with the management of the customers and and then i say no we now have to do it because the study is one one thing but to feel it and to sense it and to be a part of this is the next step and this is just what we what we did here and now another awesome. point um, another point this is done without any line of coding so we do not need any development skills we do not need to program anything or so code anything this is done with just things that are in this platform and that is why I think that these platforms are the second game changer. So after the headset, the standalone headset, you can do things in this platform without development. So as a customer, you do not need to invest whatever, 100 or $150,000 for your development team. You can do this within a few days investment of a consulting or of a guy like me who's building these things. And this is also such a big game changer here. And I really, yeah. You, you, you sense it. I, I'm really convinced <laughs> and I really like the stuff you can do. You can do it. What do you think? What, what do you feel right now? How's it going? <laughs> I think that someone who is training to be a waiter would be much happier to learn it when they can't make a mistake. <laughs> Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just see this provides such like an excellent platform for customer service training, um, yeah. you know, and putting people in positions when you have, what happens when you have a customer that is just, you know, 
not everyone's nice out there. You know, they may be rude or, or <laughs> distraught, but or how do you, and, and how do you, ha and ha how do you handle that situation? And this would be an yeah. excellent platform to help train people to be able to handle that and still stay professional. Indeed. Yeah. Certainly. I, I, I know I've worked in, I worked in food service while I was going through school and in different iterations and different customer service uh, roles. And typically you're just, you're, you're thrown into the situation without a whole lot of the service, Training. the cus mm. the customer part of it, right? The customer service part right. of it. You right. technically you can you can bring food to a table, you can put an order in a computer, but the the actual interaction with people that would it could alleviate a lot of um, anxiety people feel. And again, yeah, like you said, put to have people um, role play a, a mm. difficult customer or a rowdy customer so that you could Absolutely. handle that situation. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Any further ideas? This is really idea? awesome. <laughs> this is really awesome. I think it's the same or similar point, but having a, <laughs> A trainee, for want of another uh, word, experience sort of average and excellent service themselves can be mm -hmm. useful to help them then embody or, or you know emulate the um, the good one, if you like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a safe, it's a safe it's, space, isn't it's it? A safe space, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Unfortunately, what, what you can't you... bring customers yeah. in to try and uh, train to train them to be uh, reasonable customers. <laughs> Or could you? Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 worth a try, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It also like it also gives you a chance to uh, be able to embrace culture before you actually have to embrace culture. Yeah, absolutely. And um, one thing um, I would like to show you here with this environment as well. Um, I saw ma many, many, uh, not many, many, I, I saw a few <laughs> sometimes, but what they do is they, they do just shift the device or just shift the digitality with virtuality. And, and they use a they slide use and a PowerPoint like they did in Zoom and like they did form in former classrooms. And what I would like to show and give you as a message as well you need to bring in or put in really some thoughts and you need to think how you transform content into this environment, this environment so that you can so that get all the value at, out of the virtual reality. Out of the virtual reality. This is, from my point of view, um, <laughs> a really important thing so that you really do not shift from digital shift to virtual, but you really shift and transform content and trends. So, and finally, I will load a final, a final snapshot. <laughs> First of all, delete this one. So we are clean. So, so this is the right one. And what I said before, and we have around about five minutes left. And um, before we start the final round, I would like to show you these. If you are in a headset and walk the past there, then, then you feel what happened. And just follow me. This is, this is the bridge <laughs> I mentioned before. And you can walk up here. <laughs> See, I feel it at any time. That's <laughs> so hard. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> and you can go down here. <laughs> and this is, this is where you feel the height in your body, in your gut, um, if you walk over this, over this bridge.
and what I pretty often to do is uh, that I do a little bit of gaming aspect and put some put some cats into the trees, and then it's a uh, save the cat, <laughs> which is also a title of a book I didn't know, but um, I named this this snapshot save the cat, and you can then bring the cats back from the trees, which is a little bit of gaming aspect here as well. <laughs> Okie dokie. What do you have for um what do you want to share with us in the in the last um three and a half minutes? I find this has been absolutely fascinating, Robert. Just absolutely fascinating, and um, and I really I would love to hear from people because we you I feel like we should have started with the classroom and then did the walking tours because that classroom didn't that feel claustrophobic to everybody? Was <laughs> yeah. Like I don't want to sit yeah. in a chair and stare at a wall again. Ah! And then, but to actually be able to interact with the environment and make that teaching come alive, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And the level is so, so that's why I thought starting in this classroom, so the level is so huge. <laughs> be sitting there and staring at a wall yeah. and, and doing things by yeah. yourself. That's, that's amazing. Oh, it's, it's, yeah. It is. It's just wonderful. I just, I love the interact, Chris. You know, I'm a fan girl and evangelist as well. <laughs> but I'd love to hear people's feelings about what they just went through. Thoughts. Yeah. You can unmute yourself. I, I, I'm piggybacking off of Laurel. I think this was amazing. I love how you had the data and the stats. And unfortunately, I had another meeting. So I, I came in on a few minutes late. Um, but I caught up on the data you had in supporting and then coming back and then showing um, these examples of uh, learning environments that you can do from whether it, and this is, you know, for corporate, you know, you do this for corporations, you do this for classrooms. And even though I'm sitting in my office right now, you know, the fact that I'm, you know, I'm in a learning environment, it feels like I'm in an open environment learning, which is really awesome. Yeah. Um, with very creative and outside the box ways of thinking, uh, you know, I did your the your tree. The, your, I did your cat tree the uh, last time a couple of weeks ago, or last week we had that right. We had the same program, and it was just really amazing, and just kind of uh, really put I think give you a lot more creativity, thought provoking. The Greek or the um, mm. uh, activity you had with the Greek um, having us to play with Greek ruins. Um, just the fact of, I think, you know, this is still, I've been doing this and I've been engaged for a while, but still interacting with this is still new, right? And it's probably relatively new for all of us, you know, like we're, as we're, you know, trying to see how this fits in all of our different um, social worlds, business worlds, corporations, just life. Um, and it was really just, I just saw the creativity and I saw myself needing structure. And then I liked how I saw some people were just being creative. And then I thought, I thought, well, man, maybe I need to quit just being structured and maybe just, just put something together and see what works. So all of that was going in through my head. So I think yeah. those are all excellent reasons why we should be doing things like this, you know, so then if I'm doing this and I'm, and I'm an instructor, you know, so now, I, so then I can pass reminder. this on to who I'm teaching. So those are my simple thoughts. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you so much for putting this together. Noises, yeah. And echoes. Uh, uh, Nicole, you're echoing for some reason. I'm just letting you know. Uh, anyway, Nicole, did you have some thoughts? You can unmute um, and then mute. Use it like a walkie-talkie until the echoes resolve. Okay. Nicole? Yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, okay. I did. Yeah, I enjoyed it because it, I, as Derek had said, I, I don't spend. I personally don't spend enough time and engage. And I, I, I like. Uh, I, I'm learning a lot as we go, and this just opened my eyes as to what would be available, um, in with a classroom setting, what I could, it just opened my, it just got my brain spinning about what I could do with, with students in different scenarios, whether it would be Greek ruins or 
uh, setting up some other type of, have them put together a setting for something. If I can pull in all the, uh, what are the FX are they called? To help Just create a setting for a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, yeah. to create we'll a it. story yeah. that we, we've been reading, something like that. It yeah. just got juices flowing. Yeah. Beautiful. Anyone else? Dwayne? Oh, yeah, I, I agree with everyone else. Um, and I also, um, I'm involved with a lot of mentoring with teens. And um, I'm seeing that I need to get more involved into learning how to create um, atmospheres so that will yeah. keep my um, mentees more engaged and be able to learn. And I also learn how I can actually use the whiteboard as well. So I'm looking forward to getting more integrated into engaged. So I'm loving it. Cool. If I'd like to add, um, because it just seems appropriate here, um, a few years ago, uh, in 2018, um, a, a, t a student who had been working in VR for a couple of years uh, came to me, it literally in tears, and said, um, my teacher gave a homework, and they said that the homework needs to be on the web. I did it in VR and WebXR, and, they, and she won't accept it. Can you talk to the <laughs> teacher? I'm like, ah! So um, <laughs> I did. I talked to the teacher, and she said, no, I said, you, your specifications of your homework was that it be on the web. This is done in WebXR. It's a web page in 360 VR. Why won't you accept it? Because it's not a web page. I said, but it is a web page. She wouldn't accept it. She failed him. Even though his research, I looked at the other homework and other web pages that were all public, the research he did, the work he did, the design, the development to do that homework was so far above the rest of the students, but she failed him for that assignment because mm -hmm. he didn't follow the letter of the unwritten law, whatever that was. That is not true today, but what we found that it just inspired me so much. Instead of us, the teacher, creating the environment, really consider having your employees, your students, your clients, mm -hmm. whoever, be the ones to to do that. You know, what Derek was talking about of, of, of that conflict of, well, I wanted to be structured and, and they, you know, they were just putting things up and how we need that balance. Re, this is a great, Robert, this was a great example of, of that magic part of teaching is to set up the framework and then get out of their way and let yeah. that learning happen. So don't stress too much about you having to be the one doing it. <laughs> <laughs> let uh, them yeah. make the mistakes for you. <laughs> <laughs> you need to set the framework and there is yes. a huge amount of brain in these frameworks because they are so oh, yeah. important and they are the success they are. factors. <laughs> yeah. and, and I tell my students, I, I tell them, I will reward you for your successes, but I will more for your failures because if yeah. you aren't making mistakes, you ain't learning because mistakes don't happen from success. They happen from screwing things up. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Dwayne, I can see you're a fan of that. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Anyone else want to add their voice to this? I just think it's really good. And um, I'm a, a, a fan of Robert and a fan of Engage and all the possibilities. And I, I think it's so exciting to just imagine when, when you're in and participating like this, I think all of our brains are thinking, oh, that's brilliant. And you could do this and you could do that. And I think taking part as we have is Robert's practice, what he preached, he hasn't said, this is really good. He's actually made us experience or facilitated us experience it ourselves and, and realize that ourselves. So yeah, brilliant session. Thank you. It's beautiful, beautiful. I think that's a beautiful note to end on Robert. Is there anything else you want to add? <laughs> No, thank you very much. I think I have one challenge with you guys, which is a really, really great challenge. I always need to think about something new if you guys are here, especially Gabriella. I think you saw so many things. And I have to invent something new till our next meeting. And that's my challenge. And I love, I love this challenge. So thank you very much for being here. And um, thank you for this feedback. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Thank you all. Thank you.
All right, next up, not to end, I mean, if Robert will be here for a few more minutes. Please ask more questions, yep. come talk to him and do consider hiring him. Yeah, his company does great works and um, also check out the all the stuff that Educators in VR has going on as well. Next up for our Univirtual Experience Conference with VR Research is back in Altspace VR. It is face-to-face -face VR headset for healthcare. Um, it is with Emmanuel Lego, uh, I'm gonna mess up his name, Legio, Lego. He is um, he has created the Himosi VR helmet for the medical and healthcare industry and research and other. And it is designed to fit over the face with a big clear. It's like a scuba diving kind of um, you know motorcycle helmet type thing, uh, where they have cameras that are actually monitoring and hooking up to AI technology, monitoring facial expressions which is a lovely game changer when it comes to um, the research that's needed. And so this is an innovative headset. We're gonna have a discussion about how this can be used in research and beyond. And then after that, we have, oops, sorry, I can't do 84 things here and engage while looking at web pages. Um, after that, we have Dr. Jose Ferrer, who's gonna be talking about convincing a hospital, his hospital in Barcelona to embrace, um, to create, especially during the pandemic, a rough time. He, he did massive research and found the research that kicked over his, the resistance he had to creating a, um, a area in VR for well, well-being and mental health. And it's really gonna be a great, great discussion on that. Our XR business team is going, is after that is gonna be talking about um, similar topics to this, about some white papers and, you know, and um, research that's done in corporate XR technology and the ROI that's been happening with that and as well as the jobs and the possibilities that are out there and the potential for it. And then we have um, Rebecca Chu will be talking about job assessment in VR focused on orderliness. Boy, what a thing to do. So Derek, <laughs> you would have been good for the orderliness test. That would have been perfect for you. <laughs> Structure, frame, you know, I love it. Yeah, it would be. Uh, yeah. Would be yeah. But what a oh, thing, I mean, how do you evaluate a potential employee on that? And if you can do that, then you can do others in VR. And then we have a big party, a big social at Club Euphoria, all in all space coming up. Um, later on in, you know, whatever, however many thousand hours that this is going to be. So thank you all. Thank you to our team, to Lance and Gabriella, Nick and, and Matthew and, and to Robert and everyone. Great job. Thank you. This was brilliant. So I'll leave you all to talk to Robert, um, get off the amplification and we'll get ready for the next event. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Robert. Right. Thanks. Great job. Thanks, Robert.